when ministry remains it took power to keep it if your family is still gathered together it takes power to keep it are we together even your name the reputation god has given you it takes power 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 many of us have lost our bishopric because we ignore the ministry of power and we allow things to slip over our hands satan switched off the switch in your house and destiny and you allow the things began to decay the things that should carry value and glory were missing because there's there's no power and there's no authority i don't know one person who demons left in peace without engaging power i don't know one person whose destiny just happened like that without power it took power for Jesus to leave Hades back to the earth. Power from the earth to the throne. Elevation is a product of power. This is a kingdom of power. And it is in the destiny of every believer. Please listen carefully. It is in the destiny of every believer. Regardless the nature of your kingdom assignment. The ministry of power. Walking in power and authority. Is not privy to a few apostles or prophets. Or teachers or pastors. Are we together? It's not just for those who are called into the fivefold ministry as we know. It is the heritage of the saints. To walk in and to manifest true kingdom power. Let me repeat that again for your hearing and learning. It is the heritage of the saints to walk in and manifest true kingdom power, true kingdom authority. There is a dimension of the life of God you cannot communicate to your world, bankrupt of and outside of true spiritual power and true spiritual authority. Like you will be learning many possibilities in this kingdom, in fact, all possibilities in this kingdom are power dependent power dependent healing the sick power dependent casting out devils power dependent recreating possibilities over the lives of people power dependent my god turning circumstances around power dependent making advancement in life power dependent it is by you that i can run through a troop it is by my god that i can leap over a wall are we together advancing forcefully in spite of the arsenals of darkness it is god that teaches my fingers my hands to war my fingers to fight that means if you do not understand the dynamics of power and the dynamics of authority you will peg your life and limit yourself spiritually now for the average believer in our world the moment we talk of power the only thing that personifies power is falling down so the average believer's understanding of power is the ability to weather through speaking or through words. Once another believer can fall under the anointing, we sign that register and we believe that we are powerful. Power is beyond falling down. It is beyond shouting under the anointing. Are we together now? It is my prayer and intent after tonight's teaching that you will walk in power that is recognized both in the spirit and in the physical realm. In the name of Jesus Christ. What was missing in the experience of the sons of Sceva and the one who was plagued with demons was power, not knowledge. They said in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, that, that communication was correct, but the power components to back them was not there. And the demon said, Jesus, I know. Words with power. Paul, I know. Words with power. But who are you? Words alone. And the demons descended on them. It is a risk to sojourn the earth proposing many things. Even in the presence of demon spirits, in the presence of men. Now, believers make all kinds of arrogant statements. I can hold a charm and nothing happens to me. You are right if there is power. But if power is missing and you make certain ambitious statements, you may spend the rest of your short-lived life paying the price. Are we together? The ministry of power is not for Pentecostals. No. The ministry of power is not for charismatic people. It is a vital component. It is a principal survival strategy. Among the many things that was the green light for the church to be birthed, to be born, and for the ministry of witness to begin was the arrival of power. Before Jesus died, he had already taught them. They were not bankrupt of mentorship, but he said, tarry. What you need is not more information. Tarry. If you carry this information alone, you will be disappointed. Tarry until you be endued with power from on high. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they says they were gathered together in one accord in one place. Suddenly, the ministry of power, my God. 
it says there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind fulfilling Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but ye shall receive power someone say power the devil has not heard you say power you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and the power shall make you witnesses witnesses it takes more than education and enlightenment to be witnesses you shall receive power T.L. Osborne had knowledge but he lacked power he went to India and was viciously disappointed he returned back not for more education but stayed with God until power came I watched a few of their videos preparing for this meeting and it challenged me so much I was listening to Maurice rule of blessed memory and this man I mean he was sharing how that his exploits as he sojourned from city to city showing the ministry of power we have downplayed power to our detriment is the reason why the gospel is seemingly powerless we say a lot of things that are right our problem is not error our problem is there is no backing to what we're saying there is no wholeness to the gospel we say God can do things that are never done in our lives. The reason why we patronize products is because there is an element of performance. When the marketers tell you that the gadget will work this way, when you buy it, it works. And they never have to tell you to tell another person about it. I've told you, the reason why evangelism is difficult is because we are largely missing the power component. And the truth is that because our ignorance is laced with a lot of pride, it is difficult to even settle down and start a constructive journey towards accessing genuine power. It's difficult for the average believer to admit that we are far short of God's expectation, his definition of power. Read your Bible and see what men did in the presence of genuine power. Genuine power. Hallelujah. And so if we must manifest the authority that comes with this kingdom, it is important for us to know and appreciate, number one, that this is a kingdom of power. This is not just a kingdom of light. This is not just a kingdom of knowledge and wisdom, but it's a kingdom of power and authority. The first thing God gave man, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, the Bible says God gave man dominion, dominion, 26 to 28. He says, have dominion, have dominion. Don't speak dominion. He did not just say understand dominion, have dominion, have dominion, have dominion. Are we learning so this is a kingdom of power we have been given power we have been given authority in this kingdom Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 Jesus was speaking we'll make reference to that scripture a little later and we'll read the amplified version but for now let's make do with KJV it says behold I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you Psalm 8 4 to 6 Psalm 8 4 to 6 it says what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 for thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and hast crowned him with glory and honor verse 6 it says thou made him to have dominion say dominion please shout it like you believe say dominion <laughs> dominion over the works of thy hands please keep that scripture there it says thou has put all things under his feet if you travel with me from this to hebrews chapter 2 reading 5 to 8 same scripture but just to add flesh to it it says for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak verse 6 it says for in a certain place making reference to psalm 8 he testified saying keep the scripture please what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him verse 7 thou hast made him a little lower than the angels thou hast crowned him with glory and honor he said you did set him over the works of your hands i like verse 8 it says that thou hast put all things under his feet for in for in that he put all things under his feet he left nothing he left nothing that was not under his feet. But the tragedy is now, in experience, we do not yet see all things under his feet. So whether you walk in the reality of kingdom authority or not, does not change this verdict. That all things, in God's mind, man is the zenith of his creation. An adumbration of man's authority is seen in the story of Joseph at his point of exaltation. Pharaoh beat his chest and said, I am Pharaoh. And it is only in the throne that you will be higher than me. But in matters of governance and operation over Egypt, everything will revolve at thy word, dominion. Joseph was not the most powerful. He was not even the healthiest. We are talking of a slave who just came out hours ago from the prison. But the moment it was conferred upon him, Egypt was at the mercy of the power of, of Joseph. 
he could do and undo with anyone including Potiphar who sent him to Egypt sent him to prison let me tell you believers if we want to see the harvest like never before if we want to rise to become manifestations of the light and the glory of God it is important for us to not only embrace but understand the dynamics of spiritual power now let me say this there are a group of believers who have downplayed and trivialize the necessity for power and authority in the excelling of the believer and in the advancement of the kingdom that is a big mistake and then there are those who are unnecessarily obsessed with the idea of power without understanding the dynamics of working in the experience of it so we have believers on one hand who out of frustration most likely for secretly trying various formulas to not they have concluded that power is unnecessary and usually they lean along the angle of wisdom then there are those who are obsessed if you talk and you have not mentioned power they won't listen to you and yet in all of that communication the testament of working in authority is not captured in their christian experience it is not enough that we understand that this is a kingdom of power and authority it is not enough for us to know that it's our heritage in christ we must be able to understand that dynamics and i want to do a little work on your mind right now and please cooperate with me and the holy spirit as we journey with you to redefine a few things i want to start tonight by doing a few redefinitions and i've done this before but i need it to connect to the other things that i'll be telling you let's define a few things what is power please write what is power it is important for you to understand what power is when we talk about power in the kingdom what exactly is power power is the capacity to influence outcomes please write it down the capacity to influence outcomes is called power we say that you will have power to the degree to which you have the wherewithal to influence outcomes if you lack the wherewithal to influence outcomes all kinds of outcomes spiritual outcomes economic outcomes sociological outcomes every time you see a man in the spirit or even in the secular sustaining wherewithal to influence outcomes that man is a powerful man so power is the capacity to influence outcomes can i give you another definition i define power furthermore as the force that compels compliance the force that compels compliance i like this because the fallen system is a world of disobedience all unclean spirits are disobedient spirits in fact the signature operation of unclean spirits are disobedience is, are, is disobedience are we together now yes disobedience is the signature of all unclean spirits and so every time god speaks or every time you speak in the name of the lord do not expect compliance until they are brought by force satan will not leave your family just because the word of god says he should satan will not leave your finances leave your life leave your destiny it takes more than a good heart a well-intentioned personality to be free the bible says say unto god how terrible art thou in thy works it says it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies shall submit themselves to you the force that compels compliance the force that compels compliance there are many things that god said should not happen to your life satan heard it unclean spirits heard it and they still stubbornly hold on to whatever keeps you a victim if you do not know how to bail yourself out by the application of genuine spiritual power you may remain a victim forever it takes power to grow it takes power to retain anything you have been given retainership is not a product of wisdom acquisition is a product of wisdom but retainership is a product of power are we together now power is the capacity to influence outcomes it is the force that compels compliance let me tell you the truth this world and the gates that have been closed around the systems of this world are not about to be open for you except and unless you come with power except and unless you come with power for instance ministry will never work until power is part of the equation your home your family will never work until power is part of the equation longevity in health and joy will never work promotion will never work advancement will never work are we together now 
nothing works in this kingdom until power keeps it in place look at me think of what happens in your house and think of what happens to your produce in the fridge when there's no light as we call it imagine that there's no light and you don't have any way of outsourcing power you know how inconveniencing it is to stay two three days no electricity most likely precious things that you've spent money buying putting in the fridge or the deep freezer will begin to rot is that so look the amount of wastage that happens in a house when you have 72 hours without power so think of what happens to a believer from january till june no power i can tell you most likely the things you have received would have left you or would have lost their value power retains there are things that can stay in the fridge for up to one month because there's constant electricity when ministry remains it took power to keep it if your family is still gathered together it takes power to keep it are we together even your name the reputation god has given you it takes power 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 many of us have lost our bishopric because we ignore the ministry of power and we allow things to slip over our hands satan switched off the switch in your house and destiny and you allow the things began to decay the things that should carry value and glory were missing because there's there's no power and there's no authority i don't know one person who demons left in peace without engaging power i don't know one person whose destiny just happened like that without power it took power for Jesus to leave Hades back to the earth, power from the earth to the throne. Elevation is a product of power. There are many people in ministry who do not understand the dynamics of power. There are many people in business who do not understand the dynamics of power. There are many leaders who do not understand power because we have produced, we have turned power to become a charismatic issue an issue for men of God or our concept of power has just been deliverance and falling down and maybe healing oh no no power is beyond that the force that compels compliance the power to manipulate outcomes you manipulate and check it with the word they are not the same you manipulate again until it becomes consistent with that which is written I believe what I'm teaching you you are in for a real journey this night. We are still defining terminology. So power is the capacity to influence outcomes. Every prayer request is an outcome desired. Who's, is, is an outcome uh, that is a representation of your expectation. Something you want to change is what you document as a prayer request. And it only answers to power. The subject of power was not supposed to be an issue that we talk about. The reason why the subject of power has become an irritation in the body of Christ is because it has become a noisy expression. A noisy expression of zeal without a testament validating it. We talk a lot about power. We teach series about power with all due respect. We write books about power. So many things power can do. Stories about power that we never see brought to the scene. Is the reason why the world does not take us seriously i tell you the truth where the carcasses are in truth there the eagles will gather are we together let's define authority authority is the right or the legitimacy to use power the legitimacy to administer power the legitimacy to administer power please lend me your attention is called authority the legitimacy to administer power authority is also the right to represent to stand instead for are we together so when we talk about authority we talk about the legitimacy the right to use power it takes authority to not make your use of power illegal i will always give this example please look at me imagine with me that there are two people standing here one by my left and the other by my right let's call the person by my left an armed robber or a terrorist are we together having a gun an ak-47 and then someone standing here a military man licensed by you know the nigerian military both of them are holding guns one has power because with that gun he can produce a real effect on your body like death or injury 
the effect is not fake if he shoots that gun the gun does not care whether it's a criminal shooting it it will kill you except you have something else greater than the gun are we together now but for the military man why will another person shoot both of them will shoot but one will go to bed in peace commended by the nation another one will go to jail what is the difference both of them have power but only one has authority are you listening now you have to understand this just because you have power does not authorize you to use it oh there is a judicial system in the spirit that vets authority you ask the sons of skiva so many believers are conscious of power but very few people understand the dynamics of authority and you will be learning in the course of this teaching that you need both power and authority to work in dominion dominion is a resultant effect of working in power and authority power and authority if you have power alone then you are in the class of satan are we together now authority is a legitimacy to use power now let me say a few things about authority listen carefully please authority always comes with a predefined jurisdiction i need you to hear this the moment you mention authority you have to mention two other things number one jurisdiction number two supervision i need you to hear this it is impossible to have authority without these two components genuine authority must go hand in hand with these two things everywhere you see authority you must see jurisdiction and a system to supervise the usage of it so when you say i have authority the first thing we need to know is over what and over where and the second thing we need to know is what administrative system was put in place to check balance you in case you become a rebel are you seeing why many believers will not walk in authority listen carefully authority is always jurisdictional please look at me the official name for nigeria is the federal republic of nigeria now you may not understand that that means that a a predefined land mass are we together was a mat wherein the governmental jurisdiction of nigeria functions even if you take one step out of that jurisdiction the laws of nigeria does not apply to you again there are nations where a rope is literally what separates one nation from another but the consequences of escaping that rope by mistake can cost you the remaining part of your life are we together a rope literally if you move that rope this way you are in another nation with another jurisdiction and another set of laws jurisdiction is an important component to working in dominion like you will be learning i have taught you here but i will repeat it again that the believer does not have power everywhere and it does not have power over everything it is important for you to know what god gave you authority over and how far that authority is so that you will not find yourself engaging and applying power where your jurisdiction does not hold let me give you an instance if you recall when i was teaching you no believer has power in the throne room you cannot command anything in the throne room to respond to you not the throne not god not elders none of those there is no record in scripture of anybody issuing a command in the throne room and making things happen there is a predefined jurisdiction are we together What is jurisdiction this will be my third definition and then we'll begin to build a few things jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal you have to be a military man or you have to be a judicial person or to really understand these definitions the concept of jurisdiction there are times at least we know in nigeria where a particular issue cannot be dealt with within a court and they say it is beyond their jurisdiction am i right on that that means take this issue out of this court everyone there is qualified but they know that they cannot administer they cannot deal with that issue because it is beyond their jurisdiction so we have different kinds of courts they are all courts I'm not learned enough forgive me to give you all of the structures intelligently i won't even attempt it but i can attempt the ones i know i know that there's high court i know that there's supreme court i know that there's appeal court 
I think I tried. What is the difference between a customary court and a supreme court? Jurisdiction and the authority. As far as every nation is concerned, once the supreme court gives a verdict, whether it is right or not, within that predefined jurisdiction, the matter has ended. If you go to the does appeal court, no, I don't know. You see why it's good to be appeal court does not have any power again. I think it's done. The supreme court declares and it is over. No matter how angry you are, you have to wait for maybe rapture, God comes, and whatever it is. But as far as the earth is concerned, now listen, as interesting as what I'm saying is, it has an implication to your life. But did you know that even the Supreme Court itself, from a, from a transcontinental standpoint, also submits to other judicial systems? Am I right on that? That is what makes the Supreme Court valid. There is no authority anywhere without a system of supervision higher than it. It will not work. What makes any system have authority is the ability to acknowledge another supervisory body that regulates it. I made a statement some time ago and it disturbed many people within the body of Christ. I said, God does not have authority. It is true. The reason why God does not have authority is because of everything I just told you. For authority to happen to a man, there must be jurisdiction. And number two, there must be another system higher than you to supervise it. God cannot have authority, not as God. He only manifested authority when he became a man. And that's because he submitted to the authority of the Father. Are we together? Listen, this is the reason why God can give men authority. The Bible says he sought for you. To find out if there was any higher than him so that he would swear by and not finding any he had to swear by himself it's in your bible he was willing to submit if he found one higher than him but he did not find any the meaning of that is when god speaks to you it's important to understand who just spoke did you hear what i said any other person can speak but when god speaks the righteous judge when he hits that hammer and says go forward listen if you don't know this you will never see any sick person healed in your life when you stand before the sick when you stand before the oppressed the moment you think just of your fasting and prayer alone nobody will rise up from there there has to be the consciousness there is a parliament in heaven god the one who is speaking to you is not supervised by another government no he has absolute power absolute he cannot have authority if god has authority it means there is a place where his power cannot work if he has authority it means there must be someone higher than him that he too should worship when jesus became a man there was no manifestation of power until he acknowledged the government of heaven as my father has sent me I didn't just go I was sent I had to stay until I was sent you will understand the story between Jesus and the centurion now so Jesus is on his way and he meets this man this military man there's a reason why the story is with a military man because they are best to understand these terms so the man says please my servant other synoptic accounts will tell you his daughter Jairus's daughter and the rest but in this case he says my servant is sick unto death and Jesus said I respect you I will come to your house and he says no sir you are a busy man but there is something I know by my training I am a man under I didn't become a captain for nothing there I am under authority and being under authority has given me the license to say unto one go and he must go if he disobeys he did not disobey me the authority higher than me has to answer for me I say to one go and he goes I say to one come and he comes I say to one do this and he does it and Jesus said ah you know what he was saying Jesus you too you are a man under authority I've watched the miracles that come from you and yet you say you are a man if you said you were God I will not ask you but that you are a man this formula also applies to you so speak the word only that means the government that backs you does not have authority they can reach my house from anywhere and Jesus said who taught you this I've not found this orientation no not in Israel listen to me 
I've studied my Bible a bit. I don't claim to know everything. I've studied custodians of genuine power, not talkers of it. Men who have demonstrated power that, and their demonstration has had equal value in any nation. It was Maurice Orulo who was teaching and he said he went to a, a prison place where they confined mad people. I think it was in Haiti. As soon as he stepped there, the spirits were shouting through the people, shouting his name, Maurice Arulo. These were people who were not learned. Because power stepped in. Let me tell you, there is a signature upon men who genuinely carry power. You can't politicize it in the spirit. I tell you the truth. If, if your life does not carry power, the realm of the spirit knows those who carry power. This is not just about speaking gibberish and Pentecostal language. Power. Power. The Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of the apostles and they were taken to those who were sick. The handkerchiefs did not speak in tongues. The handkerchiefs did not fast. They did not pray, but they came in contact with men who carried power and understood authority. I have never seen a generation that is a combination of great advancement in the spirit, but commanding such pathetic disrespect from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? There were men who walked upon the earth and circumstances would not dare disrespect their commands. Some of them were not educated, but my God, they carried power. They carried genuine power. The ratio of the things we say versus the, the amount of them that happen is so small. We need to go back to the secret place and ask ourselves, something must be missing. Are we learning now? The Bible speaks about Samuel, a man whose word did not fall to the ground. There are very few people in our generation who can ever have that testimony that they speak and there is performance to their speakings backed up by power. Tonight's teaching is to challenge you. So jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed. It means even the military man, as much as he's licensed to shoot, he cannot shoot anyone anywhere. Do you know even in the times of war, there's what they call rules of engagement. Am I right on that military people? Sometimes the rules is that you don't kill women and children. Look for the terrorists alone. It is the reason why when they are fighting wars at an international scale, when they hit civilians, they charge the nations and the people because they violated the rules of engagement. Most believers do not know what they have power over. Our ignorance is expressed in our prayers. We pray and command everything, including things that are beyond our jurisdiction. And the realm of the spirit frowns at our ignorance. Our results follow same. It's important for us to understand the dynamics of power. I want to show you something that will make you a believer with authority. That powers in the realm of the spirit will know. You don't need to announce that you have entered a city. You will step into that city from one position. And things will begin to leave. A child that is missing somewhere. You make one declaration. You step into a city. And like the, like the donkey of Saul. That child returns home. Because the force is holding him. Cannot stand again. Hallelujah. I remember it was said about the man Charles G. Finney that one time he prayed so much when he entered a city people began to see mighty manifestations happen and they said what is happening they didn't even know and somebody announced that Charles G. Finney is in town now he was having a crusade in a particular location but there was a a jurisdictional reaction because when you enter a place that is within your jurisdiction everything should answer there are we together now everything should answer now if the president of this nation comes here in his capacity as the president how many of you know that there are other people who must come with him in that capacity that is how it is in the spirit when you have this consciousness of authority and power when you step in you know that you are never alone there is an angelic backing it's true power the force that compels compliance authority the rights the legitimacy to administer power and jurisdiction and I told you that authority goes hand in hand with jurisdiction and a system that supervises it. It is the reason why God does not have authority. There is no jurisdiction that his power cannot reach. In fact, he is the creator of all things. And then there is no government higher than him 
that supervises him that means you cannot say god is just or unjust there is no basis for it if god decides to lift a man you don't say god is unjust based on what he is god there is no reference that supervises him i will tell you why the word of god is powerful that same god now submitted himself to the word and says listen i can do all things i can do anything and i am god however i have limited my operation to the jurisdiction that scripture allows so the bible says he exalts his word more than his reputation more than his name that means as powerful as god is he still failed to keep his power within check using the word that means any dimension the word does not allow god's power cannot go beyond the way to get God's power to move is not to ask him to move is to show the jurisdiction based on scripture if the word of God if scripture cannot channel God's power to your body God's power cannot reach there because it is the word that defines and allocates where the power of God will find expression anywhere the word of God goes to it becomes legitimate for God's power to be there hallelujah now listen there are three things i want you to note number one man does not have absolute power please write this burn it in your heart and then write it on your notes man does not have absolute power only god has absolute power and let me add is the exclusive owner of all power man does not have absolute power it is true that man was given power it is true that man has dominion our dominion like our power is not absolute no we don't have power everywhere and over everything when the bible says all things it is a contextual communication second chronicles 29 verse 11 if god is helping you shout amen second chronicles 29 did i get that right first chronicles my apologies 29 11 i want you to shout that scripture with me first chronicles 29 11 do you have the patience to read let's go one to read Thine, O Lord, is the greatness uh -huh, and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Read on. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Second Chronicles 20, 5 and 6. Second Chronicles 20, 5 and 6. Man does not have absolute power. Only God has absolute power. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, verse 6. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Absolute power, not shared power, not jurisdictional power. God has absolute power. Number two, to walk in dominion, you must have both authority and power. To walk in dominion, you must have both authority and power. Now let's read Luke 10, 19. Read it in the Amplified. The Amplified version is the correct expression. King James in this scripture did not do justice. Behold, I have given you authority and power. When you read it in KJV, it says, Behold, I have given you power to trample upon snakes and scorpions. It's not a very accurate rendition. Amplified gives it a better expression. Behold, I have given you authority and I have given you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power that the enemy possesses. To believe Satan does not have power is a joke. He does. The Bible acknowledges that he does. But what Satan does not have is authority. Is the reason why his use of power is illegitimate anywhere on earth. Anywhere the believer shows up. It is the reason why you can disarm his power and render it to naught. Just because the devil is not disturbing you does not mean he's not disturbing somebody else. Somebody else is still his victim. It's just that it is not you. And it's because it is light and power that comes through light that has bailed you out. Are we learning now? If curses are not working in your life, it does not mean they don't exist. It's just that your reality has immuned you from being a victim of it. Are we together now? Yes. If witchcraft does not plague you, it does not mean there's no witchcraft on earth. There is. Look at me. How many of you know that there is darkness in this room now? There is. 
It's only that the presence of light cannot allow that become a reality. But the moment the light is off, the darkness does not come. It simply manifests. It is there. In every light there is darkness. It's just that the dominion power of the light cannot allow you to know that there is darkness. There are parts of the world where children have not experienced blackout. What we call, you know. So when they travel and come to some places in Africa and we are rationing 12, 12, 12 hours on. Now, of course, I love my nation. God is helping us, eh? But are we together? And they see that in broad daylight, outside is brighter than inside because there's darkness. They begin to ask, what is wrong? And they look at the child and say, it's not your fault because you were born somewhere there. And they begin to tell you stories. I was born, it was with a lantern that they used this and that and that. And now the child is wondering, darkness. Listen, Satan has power. Let me tell you the truth. When the Bible says he was stripped of his power, you need to understand the dynamics of that stripping. It does not mean intrinsically he does not have power. It means a system was created that if engaged, will render his power impotent. Are we together now? Just because you don't have a virus inside you, destroying you, does not mean the virus is not on earth. It is on earth. It's simply that your immunity and the health system you put around your life may not allow that reality to be your reality. But someone else is a victim of it. To deny the existence of that virus is a joke. But to acknowledge it and become afraid of it is also not the way. You need to understand what health plan. I'm just giving you an analogy. You understand what I'm saying? So believers are not called to fear Satan, fear causes, fear all of these things. No, the, the, this is the other angle that needs to be balanced, especially in the subject of demonology, deliverance. The journey of the believer is not an endless pursuit of fighting demons indefinitely. It is true that we all start from ground zero, but that the victory of Christ can be administered in such a way and a manner that nobody has to cast any spirit out of you again. The reason why we minister deliverance all the time is because like salvation, there is always someone added who needs that. Are we together? If I'm ministering deliverance, there are people, if I see you out here, I will say, what is wrong with you? You have been wasting my teaching because I don't expect you to be under the influence of any demons. But there are people who can come out so we will keep ministering it but i'm not ministering it to you as a mature believer but it is my overall ministry are we together now there is a level of growth you can attain onto that can immune you from these demonic orchestrations the initial separation is for your benefit then methodically bringing light now builds you constructs your spiritual understanding to a point where you are so wholesome but there are many people who these demons are having a field day praying on their ignorance and then they continue to jump and say i'm all right and it is clear they are not all right when you are free it shows are we together it is the reason why the greatest expression of liberty in many cases is the wind the wind can move unrestrained it doesn't move carelessly if it begins to move carelessly it becomes dangerous but that restraint that it is not bound you can't chain it you can't box it you can't close it that is the expression of liberty are we learning the world is changing you tonight to walk in dominion you must have power and authority now listen carefully i want to define for you man's jurisdiction in exercising authority and power how far was man given to manifest authority and power because like i told you man does not exercise authority and power just everywhere god defined the jurisdiction where the power he's given to man will walk there are rules of engagement if you don't know this you will shout and be binding and casting things anyhow and nothing will happen can i give you man's jurisdiction genesis 128 blessed be the name of the lord and god blessed them and said be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and subdue watch this now have dominion over the fish of the sea now these expressions it does i've taught you here it doesn't just mean sea he's talking about realms of operations and jurisdiction are we together the sea the fall of the air over every living thing that creepeth or moveth upon the earth so god defined for man his jurisdiction now let me tell you this where is the jurisdiction of man in terms of territorial jurisdiction two realms one the realm of the spirit we do not have authority 
and power over heaven, the heaven of heavens. No, we do not. Are we together now? We can make petitions in prayer, but we cannot command, listen carefully, this, even this idea of commanding angels. Now, I don't want to get into very sensitive topics, but there are the idea of commanding angels. Angels don't obey you. Angels like all spirits obey the word. Are we together now? So if it looks like they are obeying you, they are simply obeying the word you have come to honor. You do not indefinitely command angels just because of hierarchy and keda. It is not given like that. That means if you become careless, they also obey the carelessness. No, there are rules of engagement. So there are many believers who sometimes they just command angels anyhow. And, I, and God is a merciful God. He can forbear with our ignorance. No. Are we together? The angelic realm and the realm of clean spirits. I hope you know that angels also form part of their clean spirits and their unclean spirits. So you don't just command any spirit. No, there are spirits that man's authority and man's power cannot command. There is nowhere in scripture where men commanded the four and twenty elders. There is nowhere in scripture where men commanded the living creatures. No, there are beings and inhabitants in heaven who are not given the authority to command them. No. So you need to know what we have power over. I'm coming there. But from a jurisdictional component, watch this now. As far as the earth is concerned, this landmass and then the realm of the spirit, God gave man authority. Are we together? It is possible to speak to realities beyond the frame of science, beyond the frame of this natural habitat, this territory, and they can respond to you. This is the reason why we can rebuke devils. It's the reason why we can speak to spirits far beyond this place and they will still obey. And then over the earth, listen, the earth as it is, the winds and the elemental forces are still within the jurisdiction of man's power. You can speak to them, albeit in partnership with the word of God. Please learn this as a rule of thumb. Let this be the school of power and authority. Creation does not obey you. Creation obeys the word of God that you honor. Are we together now? Every time you speak and things happen, don't just pride and take credit for it. Uh -uh. It's because of something you have honored. You have honored the word. You have honored the spirit of God. You have honored God. So creation will honor you as they will honor God. You will not just stand and say in the name of Jesus, every demon spirit over Abuja, leave. If they do leave, it is because they saw in you your honor to the word of God. The reality of that revelation of authority. Are we together now? I can tell you one thing. The realm of the spirit and even our natural habitat does not honor nor do they obey rebellion. Obedience is the rule of dominion. In rebellion, there is no authority. Is someone learning? So when in the place of prayer, you speak increase. When in the place of prayer, you decree and declare that the elemental forces will not be used as instruments of enchantment and witchcraft against you. You are demonstrating authority. It's within your jurisdiction. Are we together now? So no one, I have taught you that in this realm, the supernatural depends on five elemental forces. Everywhere you see the supernatural manifesting physically, it depends, it is conveyed through five elemental forces. Number one, the earth. Number two, water. Number three, wind, a sound or whatever. Number four, light. So he said, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Are we together now? Every time you see the supernatural, I'm speaking to you now. I'm using the power of the air or wind, amplifying my voice through your ears to your spirit. The supernatural can never be made manifest outside of these elemental forces. And that is the reason why you must exert dominion over them. Because they are the same forces that are used by wizardry and witchcraft and orchestrations of darkness. When you go to a herbalist, it's the same elemental forces that will be used. Is someone learning? So what is man's jurisdiction? What were you given power over? Number one, you were given power over Satan and all unclean spirits. Listen to me. All unclean spirits that function within the earth, oppressing believers. Hmm. You are given power over Satan and all unclean spirits. Listen, that function within the earth realm, 
oppressing the saints because there are other unclean spirits that your power will not work for they have been bound with everlasting chains they are unclean spirits but it's not within the jurisdiction of the current dominion of the saints it is true there are other spirits that have been bound they are unclean spirits bound in everlasting chain you can't command them to be loosed they were bound and kept for the sake of the elect <laughs> are we learning the thing is hard, bar. Just listen carefully. That's why it's good to learn. Hallelujah. What I'm teaching you is not theory. You have power over Satan. James chapter 4 and verse 7. James 4 and verse 7. Very soon fire will fall in this place. It says, submit yourselves therefore unto God. Please shout the remaining sentence with me. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time. So in Christ and by the authority and the power that has been given to the saints, you can resist the devil himself and the Bible says he will flee. Meaning if you resist him and he does not flee, you are doing something wrong. Because the rule is if you resist the devil with the consciousness of that authority and power, he will flee. He will flee. He will flee. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. We have power over Satan and over unclean spirits matthew 10 and verse 1 ladies and gentlemen please read with me don't get tired of reading one to go and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits power to do what to cast them out and to heal all manner of diseases <laughs> now listen every spirit that does not directly influence earth and the operation of men on earth is not within your jurisdiction listen to me the basis of your exercising dominion is because of the interference that those unclean spirits pose to your life on earth and the program of god are we together so going around to start shouting around the planets that we know in our galaxies in a bit to bind spirits is not very mature the bible does not teach that the only reason why you will be learning the use the purpose of power the reason why we rebuke spirits is because we have learned that they are insistent on remaining within our domain and affecting our well-being and the program of god this is the basis for which we cast them out and resist their activity are we together now that means if all the spirits that plague men today decide to relocate out of earth and not trouble you nor God's program, you don't have any business casting anything again. Your business becomes wisdom to build God's program. The reason why we have to pause and deal with them is because of their insistence to interrupt your life. So when the Bible says we have power over Satan and power over unclean spirits, listen to why. The reason why we have power over those unclean spirits is because of their determination to remain and remain operative within the domain of earth. Are we together? And to frustrate the believer and the program of God. This is the reason why we deal with them. There are spirits, I repeat, that are bound in everlasting chains. There are other cadres of unclean spirit. You don't need to cast them. You don't need to do anything about them because God's justice is already being meted on them. They are already bound. They don't affect you. So you have no business with them. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the dominion. You've taken all the praise. You are made them yours. Praise to the King. You have made them yours. Praise to the King. So don't forget, I'm defining for you the scope of the power we have been given. That you have power over Satan. Say power over Satan. Say say power over unclean spirit. And I've defined for you that unclean spirit does not just mean any unclean spirit unclean spirits that are within the jurisdiction of earth interrupting God's program that also includes the realm of the spirit but with respect to God's program on earth because let me tell you something our living and our operation on earth bar is a deep mystery that we do not even know anything much about we only know the stories that we can glean from the Bible from archaeology are we together and that which science can show us but this earth and its operation and god himself and his program is a mystery that nobody has concise knowledge about so it is foolish to just believe i hope you know that satan is not the only rebel no he's not the only one who has sinned against god <laughs> i 
I hope you know the lake of fire was created by God. Huh? Satan can be punished where he created. The lake of fire is part of God's justice system. That Satan and all those who are found wanting, who have not accepted Jesus, will be relocated to the lake of fire. There is nobody based on the authority of scripture, as far as our dispensation is concerned, who has been taken there now. That judgment in the lake of fire will start officially when Satan joins them. Read your Bible. It is God himself who will cast people to the lake of fire. It is the second death, the Bible calls it. Share you want to walk in power. You see that the thing is not just about, I cast out demons. It's the reason why there is no regard for the saints in the spirit. Oh, I bind you. Say, you know me. I bind you. And, and while you are doing all that, the realm of the spirit just looks at you and they can see the gap in ignorance. So next time you say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. The spirit can see because revelation is light in the spirit. They can see the lights that support your authority. That the reason why you are asking the spirit to leave the sick body is because that body needs to be in health to live an excelling life and to serve the purposes of God. And since that spirit has constituted a nuisance to the well-being of that individual and the advancement of God's program, your dominion mandate allows you to tell that spirit to leave. Are we together now? This is koinonia. So you have power over Satan and over unclean spirits. Number two, you have power to change negative circumstances. This is another jurisdiction of the believer's power. Power to change negative circumstances like sicknesses, like diseases, like afflictions. Matthew 8 27, please. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 27. But the man marveled saying, please look up, please look up. You will write, but look up. I need you to learn this. But the man marveled saying, read with me. What manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Please look up. Did Jesus cast out wind every day? He only casted out wind when it became an interruption to his journey. Are you seeing that now? He did not just get up and look at the wind and say, wind, I need to demonstrate that I have authority. Provided the winds and the waves did not interrupt him, walking as they were created, there was no need harassing them. But the moment the wind constituted a hindrance is the reason why many believers' prayers are not answered because the basis for exercising that authority is not understood. The winds and the waves were told to be still simply because if they were not still they will cause something to happen in that boat and they will abort that journey to the other side are we learning now this is very important give us that scripture again what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea everybody say winds say sea does that look like the jurisdiction of man the winds and the sea not just spirits alone the winds and the sea obey him do you know now I, I i don't i don't want you to feel frustrated but if believers were walking in the zenith of our kingdom authority i'm trusting that god will bring us there it means that the believers within a territory can stand to tell tornadoes and tell boys terrorist operations of the wind manipulated by demons that are sweeping homes you can stand as a priest that you are and speak to the wind and say i seize your partnership with the spirits of destruction the waster will not use you to destroy houses and it should obey you it's only that we know that theoretically but if we do it it will not work you know why because we have not come into the consciousness of that authority someone say i'm rising say it in the name of jesus i'm rising Ladies and gentlemen, as hard as this class is, learn it before that wind comes near you. Because to think the wind will not come near you is playing games with your destiny. One day you will need to exercise authority at a higher level and it may be a life and death case for you. Man was given authority over Satan and unclean spirits as touching their interruption of our well-being and God's program on earth Number two, man was given authority to change situations and to change negative circumstances. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. Negative circumstances. Negative circumstances. Let me list for you a few negative circumstances. Number one, he says heal the sick. Sickness. 
cleanse the lepers leprosy in all its variety raise the dead premature and timely death cast out devils he said freely you have received freely give these are a sample of the negative circumstances that means I have the liberty to speak over someone tonight that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, every circumstance that is antichrist, that is negative, mocking God, bringing shame and reproach to your life. Now you know that we are functioning within jurisdiction. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, may that circumstance change now. Let it change now. Hallelujah. If I speak over your life, and turn your health to sickness and turn prosperity to poverty we need to look closely at that prophetic word are we together either it is god who is judging you because of rebellion because he does so there are rules god still judges men it is only that his mercy triumphs judgment but rebellion can make a man go out of the jurisdiction of god's mercy and what you will face afterwards is judgment are we learning now yeah it is possible that God, a man can be under the wrath of God. These are the, the circumstances that can turn good things to become bad things. Ananias and Sapphira, they died. Not in the presence of demon spirits, in the presence of the apostles. Right there, they lied and they fell and they died. Are we together now? This is very important for you to note. I hope you are learning. Authority over negative circumstances. Can I allow you to exercise your authority upon your life in one minute? That everything you know is a negative circumstance in your life. Don't be silent. Open your mouth in one minute and declare. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan is not doing you a favor by living. Demon spirits are not doing you a favor by living. That ugly situation is not doing you a favor by living. Go ahead and make decrees. That in the name of Jesus. Shame is negative. Reproach is negative. Setbacks negative. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. So I'm teaching you man's jurisdiction. I hope you're learning. That number one, you have power and authority over Satan and unclean spirits as with respect to they are interrupting your well-being and the program of God on earth. Number two, you have power to change negative, unfavorable circumstances. Number three, you have power to minister life. You have power to minister life. First Corinthians 15 45. Please write it down. First Corinthians 15 45. The Bible says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening or life giving spirit. In Christ, we are life-giving spirits. Someone say, I'm a life-giving spirit. I'm not just a spirit that is alive. There is a big difference between a spirit that is alive and the spirit. Adam was alive, but he could not give life to any man. Now we have the power. That is the reason why you can heal the sick. It's part of the ministry of life. Not just to cast out demons. You can literally heal the sick and correct something that is dying in someone by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ah. We used to sing a song, I, I don't know what's that song. My hands are blessed. You still remember? With the blessings of the Lord. My hands are blessed. Hold on, 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 hold on. Anyone you touch? How many people did you touch from morning till now? And you still left them crying listen i'm teaching you something here we sing songs that are so powerful but because they are bankrupt of revelation anyone you touch look at your hands i know when you touch food it doesn't remain the same yes but that's not what i'm talking about say i'm a life-giving spirit look at your hands and say i'm a life-giving spirit it's true as as childish as what i'm teaching you is it can change your life that because someone shook you in the morning, the accident that the person should have in the afternoon does not happen again. A life-giving spirit. This is not you praying. This is you ministering life. If a flu can leave somebody to another person and that person did not even have to believe the flu can be transferred, it means health can be transferred. 
if you don't believe this then you are not a christian if i can transfer sickness that coronavirus hello because you are standing near someone and you look at the person and maybe you sneezed the person does not even know what transaction has happened he just packs you and goes back home and certain symptoms so signs can follow men that is the same way someone comes to your house maybe that person has been appointed unto death but he sat on your chair this is not idol worship it's consciousness i'm a life-giving spirit that the life of god drips like rain all over me it's true life the opening of my mouth is not only information life that if i stretch my hands it is life i'm ministering to you life not just over sickness someone say life say it say life lay your hands on yourself say life listen carry this revelation you own a restaurant my hands are making that rise i'm not just giving people food i don't lord the those that have diabetes those that have cancer as they come to this restaurant i am a life-giving spirit i minister life someone shout it say life listen now i'm not saying you should practice it i know it has been abused in the body of christ but that is why you can hear someone who say a man of god sat here and i came and sat there or I came to the altar. It's not anything superstitious. It's that those who carry this consciousness, the realm of the spirit respects their consciousness. Listen, I tell you the truth and I lie not. I've had people who sat in places where I sat down for meetings. Many people sat there, but someone like the woman with the issue of blood who said, Lord, I recognize that part of the authority you gave man is the power to share life, to literally, like you can. Listen, science have taught you. Can you not share a charge card? Talk to me. I can have 1,000 Naira recharge card and I can see you in need out of compassion. I can share 500 and without our phones touching themselves, you will receive it. That means I can minister life to someone in Lagos. I can minister life to someone on the internet watching now. I speak life to you. Life in the name of Jesus. Listen, do you know what life is? life does not just mean breathing in and out life means whatever makes for dignity is called life whatever makes for sustenance is called life whatever makes for ease is called life so when i call you a life-giving spirit i don't just mean you are a healing spirit i mean your presence makes for continuity there are some of you who will receive jobs not because you need the job but that company is dying and god needs a life-giving spirit to be introduced in that office because one month without a life-giving spirit that corporation will go down and god will send you there someone say life i'm teaching you power and authority listen next week is miracle service this is what gives us the audacity that's why we pray for people you see that it's not always about binding and casting the major part of your authority is to give life 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 can translate as financial prosperity. Yes, sir. So anytime someone comes to you and says, I don't know why my life is going down. Aha. Uh -huh. What is invariably saying is life is leaving me. Whether economically, whether physically. When you, you see, let me tell you this. This ministry of life is not as easy as I'm telling you. It takes a high level revelation to walk in the experience of it. But when you press and contend and touch that realm, you become a blessing to the world indeed. Life. <laughs> ah, life that you can call somebody out and say what is wrong with you and the person says I was diagnosed of a situation and you tell him do you believe in Jesus I was sent to represent his government hold my hands and that contact life something flows from you Ta -da 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 -da. Ta -da -da if you can please hold hands with someone by your left and right in one minute just pray in tongues in one minute
let the life of God within you find expression to someone. You are receiving both horizontally and vertically. Let the life of God that build up through your prayer altar. Let it flow to someone. Pray in the spirit in one minute. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Go ahead and pray. Anointed to give life. Anointed to administer life. Someone pray. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Life giving spirit. 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 Listen, please listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. One of the greatest ways to be a life-giving spirit is to be a giver. Giving means something that was with you. A partaker of every grace you carry leaves you to another person. Whether as finances or resources, in any way and any manner, when you are a giver, it's a major way. I'm not talking of money. So if I give someone 10 Naira, you will use the notes, but there was a grace on it. That is really what I gave you, not the money. The grace that brought ease, the grace that brought favor is what you came in contact with. If you don't know, you can use the 100 Naira and just buy something. And it's the person who collected it at the shop that will carry the grace. Let it flow, let it flow. 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 Let it flow right now. Listen, let me tell you something. When it comes to this subject of power bar, believe me, I know something about it. I'm not teaching you nonsense. This is not theory. By the privilege of God's grace and by his mercy, I have lived in this reality for many, many years. Power over Satan. Power over unclean spirits as they attempt to interrupt your well-being and God's program. Number two, power to change, manipulate negative circumstances in your life and the life of others. But in all your manifesting power, know that a major part of that assignment is to be a life-giving spirit. Say that after me. Life-giving spirit. One more time. Life-giving spirit. A preacher is a life-giving spirit. A medical practitioner who is a kingdom person is not just a healer like a ritualist or a traditional person. A life-giving spirit. Look at your hands again. Let it flow, let it flow. Hey. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. 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 Lord, let it flow. Oh, let it flow. 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 Are you understanding my teaching so far? Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. Every time you try to manifest authority and power beyond these jurisdictions, it will not work. It will not work. If ever the power of God flows through your life, it is at the assignment of driving away unclean spirits or Satan. It is at the assignment of turning negative antichrist situations in your life and the lives of people or it is at the assignment of ministering life 
this is the threefold jurisdiction of genuine kingdom power now there are many many people who crave for impartation sadly and respectfully there are many who keep laying hands on others but never tell them the jurisdiction of it so we use power anyhow and we attract casualties from the realm of the spirit because we are bankrupt of understanding before you ever administer the power of god ask yourself that situation does it is it within this threefold jurisdiction of operation is it casting satan or any unclean spirit if yes then exercise it with authority is it changing negative situations and how do you know the situations are negative with respect to what the word of god says should be there must be a reference because what you call negative has to be negative indeed and the only way to verify that it is negative indeed is to verify what god has said once it is inconsistent with the character of god as revealed in scripture once it is inconsistent with god's blueprint for you it becomes an enemy deserving of your administering power and then once you see that life is depleting from a person a situation and a system when you carry patients to the hospital and find out that they are almost dying or something they they have a way of immediately trying to resuscitate them the attempt is first to get life in place then any other treatment can come you are a life-giving spirit when people sit down and tell you about their situations don't sit down and say hey yeah an apostle is not here how will we get him now it means you've been wasting the teaching you are receiving are we together the job of apostle teaching you is not to make himself an idol over you is to empower you that the same lord is rich unto all are we together that knowledge and impartation can equip you that you may say apostle is not here but there's something he has taught us that the lord works with men and he's here in our midst let me pray for you that may be your first miracle look at the woman who came here last year on a wheelchair depleted but right now look at her standing it's called life hello madonna Please sit down and write. Let's hurry up. How to manifest kingdom power and authority. Hello there Transform Believers and welcome to the commentary section of Transform Daily YouTube channel. We'll be posting the part 2 of this sermon next, just next, the same title, um, part 2 maybe with a different picture. Please, I want you to watch it. It gives you the complete videos. It's very long so I decided to share it into um, a two part. Alright, enjoy this video. I want you to, you know, soak in the word of God. As I was listening to this, I was challenged. I kept telling myself, I have the power to change circumstances. I have the power to give life. I have the power over demons. I have the power over, I've been given the power and authority over the works of the devil, over unfavorable circumstances. This message will stir up faith in you. I will recommend that you put it on repeat and listen to it over and over again. With this sermon, you understand the rudiments and of power authority and our jurisdiction as believers and i'm really really happy about this and by the way today happens to be the birthday of god's servant apostle joshua selman and i was so blessed by the life um, um broadcast we had earlier today on koinonia global i'm so glad that you stayed to the end to watch this video i want to know what part of this video has ministered to you so far especially the part that had to do with um, definitions when it defined power hmm, I was I was literally on my toes every part of this video was resonating you know the reason eh, why this video has been um, 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 like I'm ringing in my heart I've been I've been listening to it from Sunday is that this is the main reason why every other thing people do as believers don't work you need power you can't deny the fact that you need power. You need power to live a victorious Christian life. You need power to change circumstances. You need it. You need it. Things will continue to remain the way they are until you contact power. Your life will continue to suck. Your business will continue to be under. Um, um, under. Your health will continue to deteriorate until power jams power. That is why nothing, nothing, nothing happens by chance in this kingdom. And how do we get power? We contend for power in the place of prayer. 
we receive power by revelation. You know that you know that God has given, but sometimes if you don't know, you don't have. You know, there's a difference between somebody that knows the authority given to them and somebody that doesn't know. So I, I believe that the message, the remaining part will expose us and tell us many much more things. But for now, I really want, I hope we're blessed by, you know, this one. I want you to let us know in the comment section the part that minister to you the most. Trust me, I'm going to bring the concluding part this same day. Yeah, today, I'll be bringing the concluding part. Uh, watch out for this one, um, uh, the next one, um, and you will be blessed by it greatly in the mighty name of Jesus. My name is Kola Dave Godman once again, and thank you for always sticking around with us. Please do well to like, share this video as it tells the YouTube algorithm that the video blessed your life. I'll see you when I post the part two of this video. Bye.